Hello, I'm Tom Hollingsworth, and welcome to Networking Field Day. The, we are here in Menlo Park, California, and we are talking to Forward Networks. The presentation that you are about to watch is attended by a group of networking delegates who are writers, speakers, bloggers, and podcasters from the networking community that have been invited to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions about the solutions and products for Forward Networks. If you would like to learn more about Tech Field Day, including how to become a delegate or a presenter, please go to our website at techfieldday.com. If you'd like to see more videos like this on a variety of IT subjects, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So in the previous demo, we showed how Forward Verify could prevent an outage and help you diagnose an outage. We're going to continue that theme, uh, and this time we're going to focus on one small aspect of Forward Verify called predefined checks. And we're going to show you how using predefined checks, you could prevent other outages. And so the core claim of this demo is that auditing your networks with predefined checks is going to lead you to safer networks. And we're going to demonstrate that in uh, using two real networks. Both of these networks come from uh, customer, real customer usages, and both of these networks had real outages. Right? Now let's just focus on the classic data center for just a second. Right? Imagine for a minute, if you will, I'm the administrator for this data center. And one thing that's really important for you to know, oh, and one thing that's really important for you to know is that I have one customer that's really, really important to me in this data center. That customer's name is Uptime Bank. That, customer, that Uptime Bank has been with me for 15 years, and they pay me more than any of my other customers pay me. And the reason for that is because in those 15 years, they've never had an outage. And why is not having an outage important to Uptime Bank? Well. Let's just look at their documentation. We'll go to their website. Uptime Bank, the bank that's always there for you, always accessible. Yes, we mean always. No, really, we'll always be up. OK, <laughs> this is why they pay me so much for not having an outage. Right? And so one morning, I wake up, and I get this in my inbox. It's a CVE. There's a critical vulnerability. Pretty standard uh, ID, pretty standard date, pretty standard references. One thing's a little unusually uh, specific about it. A switch in my network needs to be updated. It has a critical security vulnerability that I need to fix. All right? And so ordinarily, Uptime Bank is such an important customer to me that I'm going to do all that I can not to upgrade any software, not to upgrade any hardware, not to change any config. I can't do that in this case. I have to update these boxes. All right? Now, my one saving grace so I've engineered this network for redundancy. On this aggregation switch, AG10, and on this other aggregation switch, AG11, I'm running VRRP between them. And so what that should mean is that if this AG10 switch goes down, all my traffic should fail over to AG11, right? That's what it should mean. And we can even just log into those boxes and see. AG10, show VRRP. Don't spend too much time on these commands. What's really important is you just see up, up, up. Ag11, show VRRP. Up, up, up. My network's engineered for redundancy. So let's actually do the update. Let's log in to Ag10, request it to restart. Are we sure? Well, we have VRRP running. Hopefully, this firmware update should go OK. System is going down. Everything is fine so far. Oh, I just got a text message from my boss. It's telling me that there's a major outage. It says, outage, 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 uptime bank. I'm going to go back to this page. I hit refresh. See that spinning icon? I can't reach uptime bank. This is a really, really, really important problem for me. I have an outage, and I need to figure out why. Right, so what are some thoughts? Here's our network. What could be happening? Well, maybe my server's down. Maybe my interfaces are down. Maybe there's a spanning tree issue. All right, let's start, let's start debugging. Um, we'll go to AC11. Um, is the server down? We'll go to AC11. Let's check. Um, AC11. Um, I think that the interface or the IP address for Uptime Bank is 10.1.20.4. We got a bunch of pings through, so clearly the server's still up. 
Um, we talked about interfaces. So let's see if our interfaces are down. Uh, the interfaces between ACK11 and AG11. Um, so show LDP neighbors. Okay, I'm connected to AG11 on ETH6. So let's just check that ETH6 interface. Hopefully it's down and if we just fix that, all our problems will be solved. Show interfaces ET6. Uh, read, read, read. Up, connected. That's not my problem. Spanning tree. This is an L2 network. It's always spanning tree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, I think uh, it ate some of the lines there, but essentially you're seeing that E6 is up, it's forwarding. That's not my problem. Okay, I still have my outage, I still have to figure out what's going on. Maybe there are a bunch of other issues. Uh, maybe there's an IGP peering, maybe there's an IGP issue, maybe there's a peering issue. Maybe my application is down. Just by magic, uh, coincidentally, uh, there was an out of memory issue on that server while I was updating the network. It's possible. Oh. Yeah, I'm working on it right now, trust me. <laughs> All right, so let's try to figure this out. We still have to figure out what's happening, right? It's too real. Yeah. <laughs> All of you remember this. He so this wedding hurt. I came from banking. Well, this is awful. <laughs> we need the CEO to go stand behind him and yeah. ask him if he's up. Right. Yeah. It's terrible. All right, so I'm on AG11. I'm still touching interfaces. What's going on? Show interfaces. I'm losing customers. Yeah, this isn't helping, David. <laughs> we My bonus is shrinking. LDP neighbors. We need you on a WebEx. Do you know how many dollars we're losing every we're minute? <laughs> um, AG11, I think it's on GE001. Well, this interface is up too. Um, I'm show route. How about a show route? 10.1.20.4. We have an entry in our routing table. Um, oh, but hey, uptime bank is back up. Everything's okay. Um, that's great. Except not really, right? So I started with this question, what's happening? I tried some things. They weren't the answer. My answer to this question of what's happening is I don't know. And that's a really big problem for me because my boss, he or she is not happy that uptime bank had an outage, but he or she is going to be furious if my answer to this question is I don't know, or if this ever happens again, right? And so I can't leave until I can answer this question, what happened? So just like I have a checklist here, Forward Verify also has a checklist. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a snapshot, right? So I'm going to take a snapshot of this same network. And again, just like I had a checklist over there, Forward Verify also had a checklist of predefined checks. And we can see what's happening directly from here, right? We see five pass checks, one failed check. That one failed check, VLAN consistency. Let's click on it. VLAN consistency. Between AC11 and AG11, we have a VLAN mismatch. AC11 is sending packets with VLAN 20 specified, AG11 not configured to receive them. Right? And we can even just click on the line of configuration. Let's look at AG11. Config. So here's the config. Just run an MST. <laughs> so here's the config, right? I see VLAN ID list 10, VLAN ID 10, 30, VLAN ID list 2. Fat finger. I probably meant to type VLAN ID list 20. But I didn't. And that led to this outage. So just, just so that everybody's on the same page, what ended up happening? When I brought AG10 down, all my traffic was supposed to fail over to AG11, but because of this VLAN mismatch here, I had my outage. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right, so our predefined checks just about VLANs? Are they just about L2 networks? No. We're going to take a look at a totally, totally different network. This is running ISIS throughout it, all the way to these routers here, all right? Great, we're running an L3 routing protocol. That should mean that if a device goes down, we'll just reroute around it, right? This is a more resilient, this is fundamentally a more resilient network. It's more robust, it'll be great. That's exactly what our marketing team told Uptime Bank when they threatened to leave. We told them that this network is going to be more resilient, more effective, more efficient, more safe, and they believed us. So we, hang, and so we transitioned Uptime Bank over to this other network. What we didn't tell Uptime Bank is that just like that other network, 
we had to update a device on this network, on Spine Zero. All right? But what I'm going to do a little bit differently in this case is instead of relying on that a priori reasoning that ISIS is just going to take care of ratting around for me, ratting around my issue for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a snapshot and forward. Here's the new Uptime Bank site. I'm going to take a snapshot and forward. And that snapshot, I'm going to instantly enable all those predefined checks on it. All right? And what I see instantly is there's a failing check. It's not a VLAN inconsistency this time. It's an MTU inconsistency. All right? Again, we can click directly on that link, and we can see the problem. Leaf1, the node that's hosting Uptime Bank, or the node that's uh, connected to Uptime Bank servers, is sending jumbo frames, whereas Spine1 is expecting standard 1500 byte uh, frames. What could this mean? What could happen? Does anybody know? All right, this is actually kind of tough. Okay. ISIS is like a 750 page RFC, and there are a bunch of addendums, additional RFCs after that. And in one of those addendums, it recommends that IS for ISIS that you pad your hellos to the full MTU link. Yep, I see some <laughs> nodding here by Pete. All right, and so what that means is that this Leaf1 device is going to keep on sending hellos, fully padded, Spine 1 is just going to drop them on the floor. So essentially what's happening is Leaf 1 and Spine 1 are not going to be exchanging routes. All right? Does this make sense to people? And so what we can see is if we run a search, traffic from border zero with uptime bank is my destination, it's only going to go through one route here. And unfortunately, that one route is going through one of the routers that I was about to bring down. Do people see this? And so what's different in this case is instead of making that change to my network and hoping everything would be OK, I ran predefined checks. I saw everything wouldn't be. And I can make a change to my network and change that MTU out. And hopefully, everything will be OK. So I'm on that Leaf1 device. So show ISIS, uh, show ISIS adjacency, neighbors, hopefully it's coming up. All right, now ISIS is up. I can take another snapshot, wait a couple seconds, and again what I'm expecting is I fix this MTU bug, hopefully I'll have six checks passing, no checks failing. Hopefully when I issue this search on my new snapshot, I'll see two routes through and I'll be able to reset that Spine Zero device and reboot it to patch that critical vulnerability error. All right, so just a couple more seconds. Processing the snapshot. Just as we accept, oh, sorry, I pressed a button. Just as we expect, six checks passing, zero checks failing. Let's run a search. Traffic from border zero with uptime bank is my destination. I see two routes. All right. I sh it should be safe now to bring down Spine Zero. Let's do it. So I'm on Spine Zero. Going to log in. This time I'm more confident in that change because I ran those predefined checks first. All right, the system's going down. And while it's going down, I'm going to show you my confidence. I'm going to keep on refreshing, keep on asking, seeing if Uptime Bank is available. It is. It is. It is. This, this node is down. We're still up. OK. So in this demo, what we showed you is how auditing with predefined checks can fix problems that could have occurred due to VLAN inconsistencies and due to uh, MTU inconsistencies. But our customers have had a lot more outages for a lot more reasons. And what I think is really, really neat about Forward Verify as a platform is we can take the lessons of some of our customers and apply them to others. Right? Anytime somebody, one of our customers, has a problem, we try to analyze that problem, figure out why it was, figure out if it'll apply to other people and other networks. So that way, our customers experience pain once, they have a predefined check for later, and nobody ever will have to have that pain again. Does that make sense? All right. So I just want to bubble up for a second. When I first started working at Ford, 
This is what my friends and colleagues would tell me. I'll never trust a network. And some of them were a lot more explicit than that. There's no such thing as a network that works, just a network that hasn't broken yet, right? And it should make sense why people felt that way, right? For decades and decades and decades, they've been beaten into thinking any change that you make to a network is going to cause an outage. We have all these latent misconfigurations in the network that are going to cause outages. Forward, we don't think that has to be the case. We want to help network engineers build networks that they have confidence in and can trust because they've verified them. We think that's going to lead to safer, more robust, and more reliable networks. Okay? Thank you so much.